that's the gospel. How that if we come to Jesus and we believe that we've done bad things, but we believe Jesus died and he paid for those bad things, the Bible says that if we ask Jesus to save us, if we ask Jesus to come into our hearts, he said he's going to forgive us of all our sins and he's going to let us go to heaven free. He's going to give us heaven as a gift. You see, when you get a gift at Christmas, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Well, Jesus paid for our sins. And all we have to do is ask him to forgive us, believing that we are going to go to heaven because of him, because of what he did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on that cross. And the Bible says, whosoever, that's you, or me, or anybody, whosoever believes in him will not perish, the Bible says. You won't have to be punished, but you're going to have everlasting life and be with Jesus forever. I hope you're thinking about that today. Later, I'll show you how to do it. Well, guys, I want to introduce you to my Bible-believing little sister, who's a detective, too. Hey, big brother, woo! Well, did you bring the big camera, sis? Yeah, first. Well, we're going to bring that big camera in the back room. Woo-hoo! Well, friends, here we go. Well, we're getting ready to show you some more pictures to prove the Bible is real. Well, look at this old stone tablet. It's an old rock, and on there it says, I boarded the ship, and I closed the door, the storm, and the tempest, and the rage, and we were all frightened by the flood. It's talking about Noah's flood. It says, all mankind was turned to clay. A dove was sent out and returned. Raven was sent out, but he didn't come back, and we made a sacrifice on the mountain. Well, that old rock is called the Gilgamesh story, and it's a story written not long after the flood. Now, not only does the Bible talk about a flood, but the people that lived after the flood also believed it. Now, right after the flood came the story of the Tower of Babel and then Abraham, a good man. And God said, leave the land that you're in and come into this land, the land of Canaan. And this stone tablet says that there were Jewish people living in the land of Canaan, just like the Bible says. Well, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they all lived in the land of Israel, the land of Canaan. But then they went to Egypt and they were slaves for a long time until Moses brought them out of slavery. But then it was Joshua, the captain of the host, he brought all of God's people back into the land of Israel. But you know what? Jericho, the big city of Jericho, and the walls come tumbling down. Well, that's a picture of Jericho, and there's a museum there today, and there were other enemies there in the land of promise, Hittites. They were bad people, oh, really bad. And God wanted them to leave the promised land. And that's exactly what Israel did. Did you know that all those countries are no longer here today except for one country, and that's Israel? My friends, I hope you realize that the stories in the Bible can actually be proven by the stuff. All the stuff that they find in archaeology to help support those stories. Well, once God's people were in the land of Israel or the promised land, King David got a city built, my friends, in the name of the Lord called Jerusalem. It's still here today, and archaeologists have found a small portion of that city, King David's real city, the city that he built. We can visit those places today. Well, we know that King David had a son named Solomon, and now we found the gates of Hazor. You know what that was? That was a stable for all of Solomon's horses. And so now we know, like the Bible says, that Solomon had lots of horses, and now we know from the things
things, the stuff that we find in the ground, that there was a guy named Solomon. Oh, here's a wonderful king. His name was Hezekiah, and he had a wall built. Do you want to know why he had a big, huge wall built? Because he, my friends, was a real worker. Plus, he had enemies, all kinds of enemies. It was Isaiah the prophet that spoke to Hezekiah. When Hezekiah got scared, he knew that his enemies were coming to fight him. But Hezekiah was told by Isaiah, don't worry, the Lord will help you. Well, King Hezekiah, he too had a logo. And did you know what the logo was? It was a beetle. Do you want to know why it was a beetle, boys and girls? Because a beetle is a hard worker. And King Hezekiah was a hard worker as he defended his people from the coming enemies. King Sennacherib. Oh, no, the Assyrians. King Sennacherib was mean, my friends, mean. The Bible says that he was so mean that his kids killed him. And you know what? We can prove that from all the things they wrote about Sennacherib from their point of view. Not what's found in the Bible, but from the very people that followed Sennacherib. Well, the Bible says that Sennacherib the king was on his way and he captured the city of Lachish just like it says in the Bible, and we can prove that story really, really, really happened from all the things they've written on rocks. Not only that, we can see today the ramp that Sennacherib built in order to take all of the people inside Lachish as captives or slaves. Well, King Hezekiah, he knew that Sennacherib was on his way to Jerusalem because that's where, that's where Hezekiah lived. Well, Hezekiah had a wall built, and Hezekiah also had a tunnel built under the ground to bring all the water from outside the city inside the city because they were going to close the door of the city and they would be okay inside the city with the big, huge walls that Hezekiah built. And when Sennacherib got there, oh boy, was he in trouble. Well, today, Hezekiah's tunnel can be visited. When you go to Jerusalem, if you ever get a chance, you'll get a chance to see the very tunnel that Hezekiah built mentioned in the Bible. That's just exciting stuff. Now, listen very carefully. When Sennacherib got close to the city of Jerusalem, he surrounded it, the Bible says. And this is exactly what Sennacherib wrote on this big, huge rock. It said this, I, King Sennacherib, captured 46 towns and villages in the province of Judah, and I shut up Hezekiah the Jew like a bird in a cage in Jerusalem, his royal city. That's exactly what the Bible says, and that's exactly what this huge rock says. But Hezekiah didn't have to worry. The prophet Isaiah said that God would take good care of him.